et cetera. If we start looking at a lot of these um, situational stressors, you can really begin to understand them better if you take this job person fit look at it. Um, and so went through and kind of organized a lot of the work around six areas. Um, the one that always comes to mind first is uh, workload demands of the job. Um, it is the thing that's most clearly connected to exhaustion part of burnout. Uh, and how do you change the demands or the resources or you know the nature of the task or something? There's a lot of ways of how do you get a better balance, a better fit. People can do the job well, feel good about it, go home and say, yeah, they're okay, managed to do well for all the patients I saw today. Um, control or autonomy is, is, is really the sense of um, choice, discretion, how much say you have over what you do as opposed to being essentially you're, you're framed in terms of you can do this but not that, you know, this kind of thing. And again, people want to have a sense of let me use that knowledge, those skills, you know, in doing that. And it's not going to be that I'm going to treat each person exactly identically and only for 15 minutes because I may need more time here than there. Third area has to do with really positive feedback of reward, but what we're finding is that recognition, the social positive feedback from patients, but from colleagues, from other people, are really, really critical. That they recognize when you've done something that's really been important or special or really saved us, <laughs> you know, in this case, and let you know that, you know, it's acknowledged that you, yeah, okay, this is, I mean, it's so important. Uh, related to that is, is an area of workplace community, and that's really the relationships you have with everybody that you engage with, you know, during the day, um, in the evening, in the job. And are they supportive? Is there trust? Do you have each other's back? Can you go to somebody else when you have a problem? Can't figure out exactly what to do, as opposed to being afraid of showing weakness or that will, that will make you less qualified to be promoted or something, and so you have to always, you know, I know everything and can do it all well. Um, so the, the, the social connection, connectedness um, is a really important thing in the workplace. What we're also finding is that issues around fairness, um, around, you know, do people get recognized not just for what they do well, but then do they get new opportunities? Do they get uh, promoted? Do they get, you know, are there good things that come their way because of this, according to protocol, according to policy, you know, or are they being discriminated against? You know, people feeling like, you know, women are not welcome in this particular, you know, career. We're seeing a lot of that in tech right now. Um, or, or that um, um, somebody else gets the recognition or the opportunity, whatever, and not the people who really did the, the hard work. I mean, the fairness just eats away, you know, in a, uh, a very negative sense, and we're hearing a lot of that. Um, and then the last one is really the values that, you know, your personal values and the extent to which you get to fulfill and enact those values in your work, or at least they're not violated, <laughs> you know, uh, in your job, uh, so that you're, you're not being, feeling like I'm being pushed into doing unethical kinds of things or doing things that I think are, are not right, that, you know, I'm, I'm, the kind of work I'm doing trains that spirit again, you know. Uh, I've been trained so well to do this top of my license and I'm working at the bottom of my license by typing that kind of, you know, thing as well. This is not why I went into medicine.